Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Hank Goldberg here in Las Vegas. Hank, uh, we're just talking off air before we started that I feel like a football depression right now because there's no football for the weekend. Um, I have to get over it. Every year is the same thing, but somehow this year I really miss the NFL and the colleges and stuff. But, you know, I think when you look at today's card, we don't have one ranked team playing. It's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's some good clubs out there. You know, Wright State's good. They're 21-5. and five. You know, North Dakota State, South Dakota State. These are teams most people don't really even think about. And uh, Yale, of course, and the Ivies, they're doing very well. But it's tomorrow's card uh, that has a lot of really good teams playing, a lot of good matchups that I'm kind of excited about. But today, I found one really good play I gave out. And um, pretty much it, but tomorrow there'll be a lot. Uh, yeah, today uh, I think is a good day to take off from the college schedule. There isn't much. Uh, uh, last Wednesday was really a good day. There were some great games on Wednesday. Uh, I'll tell you what was a heck of a game that I, that I had. Uh, they called me for CBS uh, cable uh, to do college picks for the first time. Oh, nice. uh, so I was on Wednesday's show, and I, I actually, Ow. the game that I picked that came through for me was uh, uh, the one where uh, I had uh, Wojo's team that came back from 20 points down and close to within one point and covered. Wow. Uh, and that was uh, Marquette. Uh, and what I said about that game was that Villanova, lacked the toughness that Marquette had, and that's the way that game uh, turned out. Um, and there was a couple of good games last night, the Oregon game. That kid who plays for Oregon is really good. Um, and uh, they came up with a big win against Colorado. Bill Walton was so pro-Colorado, I couldn't. Li- I turned the sound down. I couldn't listen to him anymore. Uh, and... Uh, you know, Colorado got off to a decent lead, and uh, and they gave it up in the second half. They didn't do anything; they couldn't shoot, and a lot of that had to do with Oregon's defense. Uh, that's a pretty good race out west. There's four teams who are very tight right now. Oregon's a different team at home uh, than they are on the road. And uh, but uh, tomorrow's schedule, yeah, you got uh, Texas Tech who. Uh, I'm going to play at 35 to 1. They're coming on right now. Uh, but you got, uh, it's not as good as Wednesday's schedule, actually. West Virginia Baylor is a good game. Um, I don't like Louisville. They got beat, uh, by Georgia Tech. Uh, Louisville is a very inconsistent team and I think highly overrated and not as well coached as they were when Patino was there. Um, so. Uh, Kentucky's playing Mississippi, and uh, you know there's some other decent games. Yeah, you um, got some, I want to talk. Go, yeah, go ahead. Well, you got you got some uh, clubs out there that nobody ever really thinks about as being, you know, a top top uh, college hoop team. But Penn State, who's known as a football school, 19 and five, ranked 13th in the league in in the in the country. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they 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 played Wednesday in the. They won. Uh, they won a big game. They sure did. And you mentioned uh, Texas Tech, sixteen and eight. They're actually better than the sixteen and eight record right now. They're coming on really strong. They're ranked twenty fourth. They're probably a little better than that. And <clears throat> this is the kind of year where just about anybody can get hot at the right time and win this thing because there's there's no clear choice. I mean, you can talk about Gonzaga and Baylor, of course, but. Anybody can get knocked off anybody these days because, you know, the three-point shot, it's so inconsistent. You have a hot a game on the outside, and you can beat anyone. And that's that's what basketball's turned out to be. So uh, we got uh, LSU at Alabama. That's going to be a big game. Uh, got, there's a lot of big games out there for Saturday. I'm excited about it. Baylor... Baylor is hosting West Virginia, who just lost at home. Well, they lost back to back Oklahoma and Kansas, um, and Baylor is twenty twenty two and one on the year. Um, 
that that's that's going to well, be. Well, West Virginia played Kansas, uh, and they got off to a great start in the game, and uh, they really had shut Kansas down. And then in the second half, they just couldn't score. And uh, Kansas, uh, they held. Their defense played well enough against Kansas to win the game. They just couldn't shoot. They couldn't put the ball in the basket at all in the second half. And that's the problem with West Virginia. Yeah, that's been a problem for a couple of years with them. I mean, they're playing a tougher defense this year than in the past few, but Huggy's got uh, problems on the offensive end, and that's that's going to be a problem against Baylor. Baylor's really good. Um, and uh, Duke-Notre Dame, even though Notre Dame is only 15-9 and nine on the seasons, <laughs> they're a tough team, and Duke isn't as good as their record at 21-3. and three. Um and then you have the interesting Illinois is ranked twenty second in the country. They're sixteen and eight. They're playing at Rutgers. Think. Yeah, and this is funny. Rutgers is seventeen and eight, and they're not ranked, but Illinois is ranked. And that uh, uh, Rutgers has gotten into a little bit of a slump lately. Uh, they lost two or three games in a row, but Illinois is terrible. Yeah, they're very very inconsistent. Um, Big Ten teams are bad. Yeah, it's it's a down year for for them, no question about it. And a lot of people thought Michigan State was going to really be good, but they're not. Um, yeah, I mean anybody's capable of a big game here and there. There's no question about that. So whoever gets hot, you know they they can go far. Uh, you got Seton Hall at ranked tenth, and Creighton ranked twenty third. Um, these are going to be some... Creighton's good. pretty good. Creighton's very good. They beat Seton Hall the other night. Seton Hall's uh, top player, I think he was 3 for 16. He had a terrible game. Uh, they should bounce back against Providence. Creighton is uh, very well coached. They're playing DePaul. That's a good game. Uh, and uh, uh, Duke is a money burner right now. They just can't cover against anybody. They don't have enough scoring depth on their team. Um, and uh, Gonzaga has Pepperdine at Pepperdine. Let's see what they do there. Gonzaga doesn't seem to have trouble with anybody. They they just mur- murder people. Um, but uh, they do play in a soft conference, and that is that is an issue. But they are they are a very good team, well coached. Pew does uh, Mark Pew does a real good job with the. That club every year, they, they're always tough. Uh, anything else uh, going on? That we got the All Star game. That we got seven. We got a week off of N- NBA, which is which is yeah, I, uh, I I I I think that uh, last night uh, there were two games, and uh, New Orleans is really playing well since they got Zion. He's averaging twenty one points a game. Uh, he's he's the real deal, and they've come on strong since he's he's rejoined them uh, from his injury, and uh, they score a lot of points. And uh, they came up last night with the with a big win, and uh, uh, the uh, Celtics had a nice overtime win last night against the uh, LA Clippers, uh, but. I want to talk for a second about baseball, and they put in a rule change that I like, and that is that relief pitchers must face three batters. Uh, I think that's a good rule. Uh, you know, I got tired of watching baseball games where they were changing pitchers every, uh, you know, with every batter, and uh, I think it's going to put a little pressure on managers and pitching coaches, and uh, I like that rule. Yeah, the, uh, the the game has slowed down a lot, and, and, and they really want to speed it up. They want to find a way to to speed the game up. And uh, just we haven't talked about this, and I don't change the subject at all, but just add this in the uh, cheating scandal with the Astros. And what what do you what do you feel is going to be the the effect? Uh, that's a major rule change that I just brought up. Do you have a reaction to it? Well, Hank, I don't want to. I don't want to. That's shuffle. a big change in the game. It's a controversial rule change. I don't. I don't really have a, a, an opinion from the standpoint of moving the game along. Yes, it's a good thing. My reaction to it is a lot of the baseball people don't like it, 
and a lot of fans don't like it. So it's it's controversial. I'm not. I cannot say that I like it. I, I can't say I dislike it. But it it's not traditional baseball because one of the things that they've done from the beginning of baseball is being able to go right against left and left against right and all et cetera, et cetera. Uh, fastball pitcher, curveball pitcher against a certain batter. This is all the strategy of baseball. It's it's taking away. Yeah, that's the- always been that's always been the case. But what happened was that Tony La Russa, when he was managing, they they called it Lu- uh, Tony La Russa ball. He brought along. He he was the guy who started doing that. Uh, not that long ago, it didn't used to be that way. You had one strong guy out of the bullpen, the Arroyos of the game, who would come in and close games out. Late in the game, you well, had your setup guy and you had your closer. That's well, the way baseball should be played. Well, let's, not with these, let's, not with these stiffs coming in to face one batter and then go sit down. I don't like that style of baseball. Well, I we, like the old way. Well, well, we both like the old way because that's where we we love love the game. But now we have now we have guys that start you know come into a game to pitch one inning. And then the starters come in in the second inning. That's a whole different rule. Then you have guys, you got the pitch count. The guy comes out, he's, he's paying, he's getting 20 million, 30 million dollars a year and he can only pitch 90 pitches. And then you got the whole That's bullpen. That's a different story. But, they, but it That's also, a different deal. but it also blows, it also changes the game dramatically from the days that we grew up watching baseball. I don't like that particular thing. I like the starting pitcher to go as far as he can go. It, that you know, that's not a rule. No, it's not a rule, but it's the way the game that's is played. That's strategy. <laughs> we can agree to disagree, <laughs> but the you know the the game changes. I'm not, not every change is a good one. Not every change is liked by everybody. It's it's the same thing with with all sports. I mean, go back to football when they started putting in artificial turf instead of grass and. And, and regular grass, and it, 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 we've we've seen this stuff happen in, in everything, and it's not all it's not all positive. Sometimes it's negative. Hello. Yeah, I made my point. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, having all that said, well, anything else you want to talk about today? Uh, one football point. <clears throat> Mark Tressman is changing his quarterback this week. He's going to a guy from um, uh, from Oklahoma State who he likes. He's very dissatisfied with the way his quarterback played last week, who uh, was okay between the 20s, and he got inside the red zone, and he was horrible. Um, and um, he's, uh, he's playing uh, against uh, Seattle this week. He wasn't impressed with Washington. Uh who we play? Who uh, he he watched on film against Seattle, Washington's favorite over New York, and uh, so we just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, that's uh, that's football. Well, the, the XFL had a had a pretty good opening week. A lot of people were impressed, and and they had some good crowds. I don't know how that's going to go forward, but we'll learn more off the second week, of course. Um, and then they're going to, I think you brought it up the other day, they're going to have a major problem competing against these conference tournaments in college basketball because they're going to go right up against them. And those college tournaments get a huge draw, and, and the ratings are very high. So they're, they're, the XFL is probably going to suffer during the month of March. So they're starting two and a half weeks. That's right. It's it's. Two and a half weeks. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Uh, I, you know, I'd like to see it, the X, XFL succeed, like I was hoping four years ago with the USFL, etc. But and somehow they always uh, step on their own toe. But uh, I'm hoping this one, this one clicks. It would be good to have extra football and and something that people would watch and, and bet on. I mean, most of the limits. Are very small on the XFL right now. You can't, you can't really. Not that I've really tried to, but the uh, most of the places are taking five hundred to a thousand on a game, and uh, I think that's going to be the case for a while. Anyway, Hank, um, 
You have a good weekend. Yeah, should be a good one. Um, there's uh, one big stakes race uh, down at uh, in New Orleans at uh, Fairgrounds. They divided the stakes into two divisions, <clears throat> and uh, there's some uh, decent horses running, a big three-year-old race, and there's points involved. Uh, Ten points go to the, each, the winner of each division. <clears throat> and uh, Baffert has announced plans for his three-year-olds. He's got five or six of them, and yeah, he's sending a couple of them east. And uh, I think there's a couple of three-year-olds, uh, a couple of big races at Oakland on Monday because it's a big holiday weekend. So that's what's going on racing-wise, and that's about it. Yeah, you're right. It is. Um, but I'm looking forward to a big weekend of uh, college hoops, and and, uh, and you've been doing very well for the most part. Um, I didn't see what you did yesterday or the day before, but I know you've had a really good, strong opinion. And uh, we could, I mean, I, I don't know, everybody else is getting into it. I don't know if you ever want to, but we could start, start talking about it next week. There's going to be a lot of quarterback changes, and they're even talking about trades for the number one draft pick and, and stuff like that. And I, I know that if anybody knows anything about it, you probably will. Well, I know that Carolina. <clears throat> I think they want to get with the new ownership, or new ownership, new coaching staff, new management team. There, I think they want to depart from Cam. Uh, but depending on what happens with his physical, it could cost them twenty million dollars to lose him. Wow. So they're faced with a complicated decision. But from what I understand from a pretty good source. He's not popular with his teammates, and he is not happy there. So he's probably going to move on. He but has, he there's has, real money issues involved with that. He has but a, the new uh, the new staff is not interested in him anymore. He is uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but he hasn't played a full card of games in a number of years. I think he missed, well he missed a lot of games last year, of course, and the year before I believe he missed uh, quite a few. From injury, so he's uh, and um, his record is his stats haven't been very good. He's a he's a unique player. He's a big physical guy that liked to run the ball, but the injuries come from getting hit like that. And he doesn't do much about missing a hit. He um, and his passing has been erratic. He's throw over throws a lot of receivers. So I could see where David Tepper, who the owner is, Carolina, he's been a very aggressive owner so far, making changes. Um, it, you know, it prob- makes sense to me that uh, they would get rid of him and start and, and go down. they got new coaches. And um, what would they do with McCaffrey? I mean, he's in a heck of a player. and is, is he? Uh, there's a rumor that they'd be willing to trade him. He's awful, awful good. That, that's not happening. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to get rid of him. He's an amazing player. Uh, kid out of Stanford, and, uh, very, very intelligent, tough guy. Um, yeah. Anyway, the uh, he's as good as a running back as there is in the game. I agree. Why would you trade him? Trade him for what? Well, they'd have to get a lot for him. That's for sure. A lot of players, but uh, I don't think he's on the market. Well, let's hope not, because uh, Carolina... Where did you hear that? You know, Hank, Hank, there's so many talking heads out there these days that everybody comes up with an opinion, whether it's true or not. They just make it up so they can get the press. <laughs> it doesn't have to be true. They just say it. And uh, well, I, I've never heard that one. And uh, there's, there's no talk in Carolina about McCaffrey going anywhere. They do want their offense. If they if they want to move up and get that number one draft choice, they're going to have to give. But that's not happening. The number one draft choice is not for sale. Okay, Cincinnati going to take Burrow. Yeah. Who takes Tua? Uh, that's a good question because uh, the, the the team that's looking to move up is Detroit. Really. Huh. It, they're they're tired of Stafford. Yeah, they they they're looking to trade him and moving up. 
Stafford is a big price ticket. He gets he he has a huge contract. Um, wow. Well, it's going to be musical chairs for the quarterback quarterbacks this year. There's probably including draft choices and t- kids coming out of college. You got twelve or thirteen quarterbacks that could be on the move. That's crazy. Never seen anything like that. Okay, Hank, um, you have a great weekend. We'll talk again next week. Okay, Jim, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.